One would assume that uh, there must be a huge need, you know, on the ground. We're talking about market forces here. What specific steps uh, are you able to take so as to stop that type of trade? Yes, yeah, so, I mean, we're confronting a serious uh, crisis here, but the positive side is we are seeing a, a global collective effort that's underway that involves the UN, it involves conventions, in particular CITES, it involves international organisations and the non-government sector who are all working towards the same objective of bringing this illegal trade to an end. Uh, we're seeing efforts underway at a political level, and you've just referred to the first ever UN General Assembly resolution specifically on this topic of uh, combating illicit trafficking in wildlife, a very powerful resolution adopted by consensus. We're also seeing greater financing becoming available through a number of uh, bilateral and multilateral donors as well as philanthropists. But we're also very importantly seeing this effort directed towards the front lines. And when I talk about the front lines, it's the rangers serving in the front lines, but it's also the customs, the inspectors at customs points. It's the police, it's the prosecutors. Uh, we're seeing an increasing level of attention being paid to this frontline effort in ensuring that the political and financial resources support that effort. And in particular, we've seen the creation of the International Consortium on Combating Wildlife Crime, uh, a global effort by the CITES Secretariat, Interpol, UN Office of Drugs and Crime, World Customs Organization and the World Bank, who have combined their resources and their capacity to provide coordinated support at a regional and a country level to support frontline efforts to combat this serious crime that's underway. Now, John, uh, there have been some reports uh, suggesting that uh, a lot of wildlife uh, officials actually are compromised uh, by the fact that uh, they are taking huge bribes. To what extent are you getting the necessary cooperation from governments? Cooper um, corruption is an issue that affects many sectors, not just this sector. And we are confronting uh, corruption in combating wildlife crime, just as corruption is being confronted in combating illicit trade in narcotics or any other area. What we've seen through the UN uh, General Assembly resolution, through resolutions of CITES, our convention, and through the work of the UN Office of Drugs and Crime and others, is an acknowledgement that corruption is a serious issue and that we need to work through instruments such as the UN Convention Against Corruption and apply these tools and techniques to stamp out uh, corrupt practices that are fueling this illegal trade, while also recognising the vast majority of people and rangers are doing the right thing and we need to offer them our full support, ensure that they are properly paid, that if they are killed in the front line in undertaking their, their work, that their families are able to be supported. So we need to stamp out the corruption for sure, but we also need to recognise the support we need to provide to those honest, hard-working rangers, customs officials, police and prosecutors who need our support to take this on head-on in the front lines. Well, thank you very much, uh, John, for your insight.